The race is on. To reach 1,000 subscribers by March 17th, you can help by making sure you subscribe and like this video. The topic today, one that's near and dear to my heart, Disney magazines, because I not only use them a lot for research, but I've been lucky enough to write for Disney magazines, including this one, Disney 23 Magazine, the official magazine of D23. But today I'd like to go back, back, back in time to 1968 when Gulf Oil became a sponsor of the weekly Disney TV series, then called Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color. In my video about Disney compilation albums, I talked about Gulf's involvement with Disney, and one of their premiums was indeed two Disney compilation albums. But they also made available at Gulf service stations another premium in the form of the Wonderful World of Disney magazine. This first issue was released in 1968, and there were six issues in all published through 1970. So we're going to take a look at the first few issues today. They're so jam-packed with all kinds of Disney goodies that I think we tried to look at all six of them. This video would be too much of a good thing. So let's take a look at issue number one. And issue number one has this neat wraparound cover with a lot of photos and images that you're going to see inside. Back here is the Gulf Oil logo. And of course, this nifty logo that they came up with for the magazine that was on all the issues of the magazine. They did make a couple changes to the magazine cover. One you'll be able to spot. One you'll have to have me tell you about unless you're familiar with the magazine. And I'm going to reveal those two things to look for at the end of this video. So stay tuned. But to get back to issue number one, this wraparound cover gives you a good idea of the wide variety of subjects that are in this magazine. I kind of have the feeling that issue number one was put together in kind of a hurry. They did something quite clever here. They took illustrations from one of the storyteller albums that covered the Jungle Book, which was, of course, pretty new, having been released in 1967. So they wanted to give the Jungle Book a lot of play. But anyhow, they used these illustrations telling the story of the movie to illustrate a new story, more Jungle Book, which were further adventures of Mowgli and Baloo. And it's really quite clever. But some of the material is from a previous magazine that I've mentioned in the past, especially in the Mickey Mouse Club video that I did. Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse Club magazine, also known as Walt Disney's magazine, that gives us a clue that this magazine is published by our favorite, Western Publishing. So they had a lot of art and stories to draw upon. But one of the regular features was a swinging fairy tale, Rapunzel. And this is kind of a fractured fairy tales type approach. The text is, the illustrations are for a more straightforward telling of the story, which again makes me think that this issue is put together in a hurry. But we'll see more satirical illustrations in future issues. Now what else was happening in the world of Disney in 1968? Well of course it was Mickey's 40th birthday and we have this great spread from Mickey's scrapbook. I really love the writing. Things like Mickey kept smiling even when things didn't go his way. Minnie Mouse has been Mickey's leading lady in hundreds of films. They chose this picture to illustrate that. Minnie is one of the few mice who has ever adopted a cat. His name is Figaro. Having written some books and articles about Mickey myself, I know it can be kind of hard to sum up his career and sum him up as a personality. So again, such good writing to start this. Mickey Mouse has always been a star. He has never played bit parts. In Brave Little Tailor, Mickey was armed only with his quick wits and a pair of sewing shears. Just the same, he soon made that giant thing twice about picking on little people. I think I mentioned this scrapbook article in my previous video about Mickey Mouse's birthday celebrations. Some great comics were published in here. This was from the studio's foreign publications program, <laughs> and it's written by Dick Kinney and drawn by the great Al Hubbard, and it stars Feathery Duck. This comic was the introduction by a lot of people of this character that wasn't really used in the United States much. So how fun that this was published in the United States, finally. It was originally published in 1965 overseas. And today, Feathery has this great cult following, which just follows because he's such a zany, fun character. 
He's Donald's cousin, just another one of Donald's innumerable relatives. The 2022 Winter Olympics are happening as this video is happening. But in 1968, the Summer Olympics were being held in Mexico City. So naturally, we have to draw on a previously published article about Goofy and the Olympics using art and stills from his classic cartoon, The Olympic Champ. An idea introduced in Walt Disney's magazine, Jacques and Gus Gus as the Brave Mice, is elaborated on here. Here we have the Brave Mice and the Magic Cheese, told by Jacques himself. And the little introduction says, When Cinderella married her prince, Jacques and Gus and some other mice went to live in the palace. In this story, Jacques tells of a marvelous adventure they had here. And the Brave Mice said their adventures recounted in future issues, too. And another recurring feature in the wonderful world of Disney Magazine is Ranger Woodlore's Nature Hikes. Now, Ranger Woodlore was becoming a star on the wonderful world of Disney in new animation coupled with great Disney nature photography. Speaking of the Disney nature films, here's some great photography. That was regularly featured in the previous magazine as well. And there was usually some kind of behind-the-scenes feature on Disneyland. Of course, the only Disney theme park there was at that time. This is a great feature on the wonderful horses that pull the trolley cars on Main Street, USA. Here's a big feature about Native Americans in Navajo country. Terrific. Another feature that was introduced was a sing-along song from one of the Disney animated features. And of course, as I said, since the Jungle Book was so new and such a huge hit, it was a natural way to include more about the Jungle Book, The Bare Necessities. Of course, the Academy Award-nominated song from that film, composed by Terry Gilkinson. Another regular feature, how to draw one of the Disney characters, in this case, Donald Duck. In addition to stories, there were also games and puzzles and activities like these Winnie the Pooh paper bag puppets, which you could take a lunch bag and make your own puppets of the Pooh characters. Some pretty complete but simple instructions. And again, that was a brand new property having been released at the end of 1968. So this was right up to date. Considering Gulf was, as I said, a sponsor of the TV show, here's previews of The Wonderful World of Color. Issue 2 carried on all these ideas. On the front we have The King of the Grizzlies from that new movie. And here we have Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day. So let's open it up and see what's inside. And here's our article about the new King of the Grizzlies movie and some behind the scenes stories about the training of the bear. And the star of the movie is obviously Big Ted, as this trained bear was named. And many issues will have behind the scenes stories about new Disney films. More articles about Native Americans, always a favorite Disney subject. This art is just great, by the way. Another great behind-the-scenes article, The Mad Mad Race, which was a preview of The Love Bug, released in March 1969. This is the winter issue, so it was previewing it, and all kinds of behind-the-scenes stories about the filming of the races that are such a big part of that movie. And of course, the movie was a smash hit, so this preview was probably a big part in letting people know about it. Now again, as we mentioned, Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day, was new and they were really trying to celebrate it since it was another big hit and here we have our sing-along song the wonderful thing about tiggers written by those marvelous sherman brothers and the idea they had was follow the bouncing tigger so they have this great illustration of tigger he's not actually in the song but look at rabbit <laughs> acting right in character he's just astonished it's what he's seeing and you can not only sing the song, of course, but the notes are here so you could even play it on the piano. Or as it says, pick out the tune on your glockenspiel or your piano if you don't have a glockenspiel handy and start right in. <laughs> How fun is that? Here we have an article called Fabulous Friends at Disneyland. So this is about the design of the characters that meet and greet you at Disneyland. We even have Imagineer Bill Justice in photographs down here. He, of course, designed, or should I say redesigned, the characters in the 60s. And we have such new stars as Baloo and Winnie the Pooh. Gus and Jacques are back, the brave mice and the vegetarian cat. <laughs> How wonderful is that? 
in this story that distinguished author Jacques, who presently occupies the position of chief cheese taster at Cinderella's royal palace, tells how he and his friend Gus adopt a pet and of the strange events that follow. These brave mice stories are just so much fun and told by Jacques himself, and they are very creative and imaginative. More comics, Donald Duck, and featuring Feathery. A new swing in fairy tales, Little Red Riding Hood, as told by friendly old Uncle George. Uncle George was George Sherman, who was a very important creative force at Western and at Disney in creating a lot of the material Western published. This time, instead of Further Adventures of Baloo, we have Further Adventures of Peter Pan. This time, this is new art. Then we have riddles and jokes under fun and nonsense, and we have some psychedelic stuff happening here because this is the late 60s. Some of these puzzles were picked up from the giant comic books and activity books and coloring books and so forth published by Western. Another thing that was featured right from the start is letters from the Disney mailbag. So we have letters here from Williamsville, New York, Falls Church, Virginia, Columbus, Ohio. A couple interesting ones. The, these are all quite interesting. A few years ago, I saw on television a movie entitled Grey Friars Bobby, which of course was a Disney movie. Would you please tell me the breed of dog used in the movie, as our family would like to obtain one? Here's the answer. Grey Friars Bobby was a Sky Terrier. The editors. This one's quite fascinating. I am very much interested in obtaining a complete set of Walt Disney comic books up to the year 1948. <laughs> well, I'll just bet you are. <laughs> Even in 1969, when this was published, they would have been worth a lot of money. Not worth as much as they are now. <laughs> I would appreciate any help you might be able to give me on how I should go about obtaining these and how much I might expect to pay for them. Let me take the opportunity to answer that last part myself. A lot. Now let's hear how the editors handled this. At this late date, it will be extremely difficult to obtain a complete set of Disney comics through 1948. There is quite a bit of interest among collectors in these early comics. Today, more true than ever. We ourselves neither buy nor sell older titles. We have our file copies, and with these we are content. We could not even begin to estimate what a complete pre-1948 collection might cost. And another thing that's regular feature of this, no surprise, is an ad for golf. Now you can see what treasures these magazines are, really. A lot of fun and information. Here we have issue number three. This too was published in 1969. 101 Dalmatians was being released. There's Pongo and Lucky on the cover. And as it says, beginning this issue, 101 Dalmatians and a new continued story. Again, trying to give a sense of the variety you will find inside. A boy and his horse, always a good Disney subject. And, along with this art, talk about being up to the minute. Exclusive interview with moon astronaut Michael Collins. And I really like the very professional, respectful responses that these letters get. Listen to this one. This is coming from Smithfield, North Carolina. I want to know if you could send me a copy of The Jungle Book free of charge. I haven't read it yet. I'm sure there could be numerous ways to approach that question, but this is just so respectful. Sorry, but we can't send any books from the studio free of charge. Maybe that would have been enough, but it goes on. As a matter of fact, we couldn't send out books even if you sent us money. Our publishers take care of distribution for us. We keep only file copies. <laughs> this is a great one from Manson, Iowa. I like Walt Disney books, pictures, and other things. Everything is unusual, just like the lady here in Iowa with four-inch fingernails. <laughs> the response from the editors is simply, hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. See, the wonderful world of Disney magazine was years ahead of its time. Now here is some fantastic art that we saw a preview of on the cover showing life in space. And this art is signed. It's by the famous Disney artist Paul Wenzel, who did so many of the Disney live action posters, but also other projects like this one. So it's fantastic. Talk about it being up to the minute because we know what happened on July 20th, 1969. 
the U.S. astronauts landed on the moon. As it said on the cover, this is an interview with astronaut Michael Collins. This is published ahead of the moonwalk because it says, with the recent lunar flights and the prospect of astronauts soon landing on the moon, the predictions of the 1956 Disney television shows, Man in Space and Tomorrow the Moon, are coming true. Walt Disney affectionately described these programs as science factual, and Werner von Braun, now with the U.S. rocket program in Huntsville, Alabama, aided in their preparation. The shows illustrated future life in space, eating, sleeping, and working while weightless. Wonderful World of Disney recently sent writer Doug Gordon to NASA in Houston to interview astronaut Michael Collins and find out how the problems foreseen in the Disney film have been solved. Beginning on page four is Gordon's report. Now, Michael Collins, of course, was the astronaut that stayed in the Apollo 11 capsule while Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed and walked on the moon. Some great photos from NASA, all historic from the Gemini program because Apollo was happening, of course, and as we said, this was published before the actual moon landing. If you would like to learn more about the Man in Space television programs, Dean Brinkerhoff and I did a Digging the Details video about Mars and beyond, so be sure and check that out. Now, here's a story about the raccoon tied into the then-new movie Rascal, starring Bill Moomy. Here's the brave mice in one of their best, The Invisible Menace. In the last issue of Wonderful World of Disney, Jacques, the intrepid mouse who is chief cheese taster at Cinderella's Palace, told how he and his friend Gus adopted a pet, a vegetarian cat, and how they brought a piece of Philosopher's Stone from a temple in ancient Egypt. In this issue, Jacques tells of the strange events that followed. So this is a direct sequel to the last story. Here we have Gus and Jacques with their pet cat. And I believe that character is continued into the other stories as well. Another swing and fairy tale, this time Rumpelstiltskin, set at the psychedelic delicatessen. More comics. Both Donald and Feathery are in the comic, but this time they're focusing on Uncle Scrooge. Here is the new story, starring 101 Dalmatians, The Case of the Light-Fingered Fiddler. Just terrific. And this mixes existing art that you would see in some of the golden books about 101 Dalmatians mixed with new art. Here's the fiddler right here. Here's more about Native Americans in Appaloosa country. And again, this art, which is so wonderful, is signed by Neil Boyle, a celebrated illustrator Disney used a lot during this period most famously for his art for Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. You can see his signature right here. Another behind the scenes story about Disneyland with some great character art about how Disneyland is kept so clean. And look at these great photos. Here's Main Street USA, the Main Street Cinema. Some cast members are cleaning the street. More previews from the wonderful world of color, including one of the best they ever did, which was new at this time, The Treasure of San Bosco Reef, with Roger Mobley, one of my favorites. He's, of course, Gallagher, but plays a modern-day character in this story. And the sing-along song this time is from Peter Pan, You Can Fly, You Can Fly, You Can Fly. It's hard to say that title without actually singing it. In this issue, here's How to Draw Goofy. It's just great, great art. And we even have from our younger set, because Children were sending in drawings and poems and such, and they were publishing some of them. We're grateful to all our friends who have sent us drawings, poems, stories, and photographs. We only wish we could publish every piece that has come to us. Although we can't return unused material, we are carefully considering each as a possible contribution, except for trace drawings of the Disney characters. Sorry, we just can't use these. The editors. Again, so professional, so respectful. I love how it just says our friends instead of children or younger readers, although it is called from the younger set. Probably adults were sending in those things too. It's just striking the tone of the whole magazine is like that. And then we have, as mentioned, of course, we can't close without an ad from Gulf. 
Now, before I mention that there were two additions to the magazine that were not on the covers of issue number one, and that is, they did make a change in the logo. Did you notice what it was? Instead of a period over the I in Disney, it's Mickey Mouse. Not quite a hidden Mickey, but easy to overlook and a great touch. And then on the back, instead of a wraparound cover continuing, we have these great posters with these really terrific late 60s design. Here's Uncle Scrooge McDuck. And on the back of issue two, we had Winnie the Pooh. This is all original art created just for the magazine. So it's a real Disney plus for this great Disney magazine. There's more great videos coming up. Some surprises for our second anniversary in March. Please be with us next time when we'll be talking to Malibu, California fisherman Treg Brown, who caught a record-breaking shark-nosed Tralfaz. I'm sure that's going to be a fascinating interview because so far his only comment has been, Twarn't nothing.